Welcome back everyone to the lecture about Applied Bioimage Analysis, Advanced Image Schema for Programming. This part will be about user interfaces. So what do I mean with user interfaces? Hopefully, ideally, any image processing, image analysis workflow is completely, fully automatic and you put an image in and you get a measurement out and you don't have to deal with details anymore. Unfortunately, there is quite a number of uh, image analysis problems which cannot be solved like that. You sometimes need input from a, from a human who, for example, outlines um, a particular cell and then the analysis you are performing is only performed for this particular cell. So from time to time, you may want to write a script where you can ask the user for something. It can be outlines in an image, but it can also be numbers. And whenever you call a plugin in image day where a dialog pops up and this is this is what I mean with user interfaces right so there are many uh, plugins in image day opening these kinds of windows where you can enter numbers uh, booleans uh, that's the technical term for a checkbox and you can ask the users to make a choice um, a selection and, and you can also enter files and folders and I will show you now how to how to do these things the the most simple way of doing it, if you, for example, want to ask the user for a directory, you, you just use the get directory method and when the program is executed, um, it will open this dialog. You find actually the string you write here, you find then here in the headline of the window and um, after executing this program, so it asks for a directory and then it will go through this directory and print out all files which, which end with TIFF and then you can, for example, see what, what TIFF files I have on my desktop. Furthermore, you can build your own dialogues. Whatever position in the code, you just um, open a dialog where you ask the users for some parameters. For example, a, a quite practical case is, for example, if you want to you want to save the results of the of the data analysis, but you also want to save um, who did the analysis and, for example, the experiment number. Then you can put these two things together in a dialog where you say, okay, first of all, we create a dialog. The dialog has a certain headline. We again find here. Then we give an additional message where we explain a bit what this dialog is for and what the user is supposed to enter, just to give some hints to, to program a good user interface with documentation, right? And then we say, we add a string field here where the user should enter his name. So I say here, your name, and it says here, your name. And I can also give a default value. Default value in case of name is a bit tough because I don't know who will execute this program later on. But I can, for example, suggest the user to enter his first name and last name by writing a default value like that. So you see here the variable name is handed over as default. And then I can also ask the user for entering a number, for example, the experiment number. And again, the default value experiment number is a variable defined here. So I can ask the user to enter a number. Then I show the dialog, then, then this window will pop up. The code execution will not continue until the user clicks on OK. So this is how a dialog works, right? As soon as the user clicked on OK, I can read out um, the variables again. For example, if I say name equals the dialog get string, it goes in the same order as we added the fields here. We have to read out the fields over there. So that's quite convenient in order to, to have certain parameters entered in a, in a program. And then finally, we can just with a print statement, for example, print out what the user just entered. It should then, when I enter robot in experiment number three, um, it should then, <laughs> it should actually say three here. So maybe the screenshot is a bit screwed up. An alternative to that, an, an alternative way of achieving the same thing is using the so-called add parameter annotation. The special thing with the add parameter annotation is it only works at the beginning of your program. So you can um, enter a term like this, where you say, I want to have a string in a variable called name. So the, it's unfortunate that the order here is different, that it's not name equals something. It's uh, something will be written into the variable name. And then if I execute this little program, try it out later on. If I execute this little program, a dialog will pop up where I can enter my name. Um, and then uh, hello Robert will be printed out. So um, this is how this particular syntax works. Um, and you have, yeah, it must be in the first lines of your macro, as I just said. And you have a lot of opportunities of how to tune this. So this is actually more flexible than the dialog I showed you earlier. But again, you can only execute it at the beginning of your program. Um, so you can, for example, say, okay, I want to have a variable. So I want to have a variable called text. 
um, where I put a string in. So this is how this field will look like. If I want to put a message here, a useful hints for the user how to use the dialog, you uh, enter it like that with the visibility message. And then you can put a string in here. And you can have integer numbers and you can have a double position floating point numbers um, into this field. Uh, and if you change the style, you can actually have sliders and spinners. You have here, you have you have more opportunities of how to of how to configure this. To show this a bit in a more systematic way, that's again such a line. So I have a string here with a certain label, and that's my variable name afterwards. This is how it will look like, and you have certain options for all these uh, things you can enter here. So you can either have strings, integers, doubles, booleans, files, colors, date. You can configure the label description. You have in case of spinners, for example, you may want to have a minimum value and a maximum value, stuff like that. And by the end, there comes always the variable name. Then there is another tool, the so-called wait for user method. Also very practical if you want to have in your execution of your script within the flow, um, you want to have an additional input from the user. For example, if you want to ask the user for drawing a line into the image, you can use the wait for user method. The wait for user method. So the program execution comes and does some things. For example, it opens an image, and then it comes to the point where you program the wait for user dialog. You can also tell the user a bit what to do. Then this window will pop up and the continuation of the execution is stopped. So the program is not further executed until the user clicks it on OK. So I can then draw my little line and when I click on OK, then the rest of the program will be executed. And I can, for example, print out the length of the line or the signal along the line, stuff like that. Let's just try that out. I open an image, just the blobs image as an example. Then I tell the user, please draw a circle. And then I print out the area of the circle, for example. Yeah, and you can see now here that the image opened. And the program asks me to do something, and I can draw my circle if I select the right tool. And it will then print out the area. In this case, the area is the number of pixels within this circle, right? So in this wait for user method, it's, it's a, from, a, from a user convenience point of view, it's kind of important to, uh, to always write this little sentence here. It's a line break, by the way. So I tend to add this click OK afterwards sentence usually because often people click on OK and want to try the circle afterwards, but unfortunately it's not working like that. It works the other way around, right? You you have to to draw the circle first before you click on OK. And that's why I, I, I tend to put this additional sentence in here. There is on the when you go to the ImageJ website, there is some recommendations of uh, further literature about uh, advanced image J macro programming. If you want to learn more about it and if you want to find out more uh, in image j macro and this is the, the recommended literature you can have a look into the next part will be about writing good code see you soon